Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Transformed You. I am your host, Mark DeJesus, and I'm here with my amazing, lovely, awesome co-host and my wife, Melissa. Well, I just love my introductions every week. Isn't that a great introduction? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. It's good to be here. Thank you. I know. It is really we're, good we're to be We're excited about today's episode, and we're going to get into a very important subject. Do you want to segue into what we're talking about today? Yes, definitely. We have been really trying to bring home an awareness to all of you who are tuning in about what really encompasses healing the heart. And a big aspect of that that we've brought out in other episodes is this understanding of nurture and the lack of it that a lot of us have had in our lives. And we've talked about it in relating to the father wound and what that means if that isn't there. And a father can bring, we take that word and we sometimes say that's a woman's word. Well, it's not. There is an element of it that fathers can bring an aspect of nurturing in the home and it can bring, as we've talked about before, stability in your identity, speaking words over the home. That's a nurturing thing that a father does. His presence being one of strength and peace is nurturing in the home. But a big element of this is the mom and what the mom brings and what happens when the mom doesn't bring that to the home. And the mom's, the mom's place and her presence is enormous. And I think it's one that we've talked about in the past that we have a hard time even looking at. We have an easy time recognizing. It's easy to blame the man. It's easy to blame the dad. But when it comes to the mom and what she is to represent in our hearts, in our relationships, and who we are in the journey of our upbringing, uh, we sometimes have a hard time with that. I think more so in of recent years and psychology and talk shows and all that, we can recognize that. But I still think we have a long way to go. And a big aspect of understanding the mom is nurture. This aspect is huge. And if you don't have it, we've been noticing. I've had it in my own life. And it's not a blame against my mom. Her and I have had conversations of what she was given and not given. But I've understood where I have lacked this in my life. And we want to get into today, what does it look like when we don't have proper nurture? And what does it look like when we can get it and then ultimately get that through our Father in Heaven? I think it's important as you're segueing and introducing this topic, it's important for people to understand that we process our relationship with God through how we processed our earthly relationships. Yeah. God is the perfect Father. But yet we have certain gauges by which we engage, we engage what Father means. So we first want to recognize in the healing process to allow the heart to come fully alive. When we're talking now about the healing of the heart aspect, there needs to be an adequate addressing of Father wounds. Mm. And we have materials you know, exposing the rejection mindset, experiencing God's love as your Father. But we also want to bring out this aspect of nurture, which is a primary mechanism that God is deposited, like you said, in both parents, but it's yeah. a strong suit on the mother's side. Yeah. So this now brings out aspects of, of mother wounds. And again, we never want to get into the blame game, but we right. want to bring recognition of what do you carry in your life as far as being able to connect to the Father's love for you, being able to connect to nurture. Now, what I'd like to introduce into this topic is when it comes to nurture, mm -hmm. people who lack nurture struggle with receiving the comfort that the Holy Spirit brings us. Yeah, it's really important. So, yeah, we're big on helping people to fellowship and interact with who God is in the Godhead. There's a plurality of who He is in the Godhead. The Father, the Son, who is the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And if you want to engage the Holy Spirit, it is not only a power thing, when you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, Jesus also talked about, you'll be comforted. I'm sending the comforter to you. We live in a time and age where there are struggles and disappointments and ups and downs that people are going through. If you don't have a grid of being able to receive comfort, then what the Holy Spirit brings, there, there, there's going to be some blocks in being able to receive comfort. So I think Absolutely. maybe what we could we could start with is start with a basic foundation of what nurture is mm. and then what happens when we lack nurture. Right. I would say if you want to look at the word nurture you can you can look it up in the dictionary you can look it up even in 
um, the, the Bible where it, it talks about raising your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, it really speaks of two aspects. One is comfort, recovery, help in, in, in difficult times. That's one aspect, mm. the comfort part. The other part is training, training in how to think in ways that are going to be useful for your life. And, and these are things that we lack in our journey so badly. Oh, my gosh. Wow. How to yeah. comfort ourselves. And then the training and tools for how to walk that out. Yeah, those two words, comfort and training, I want to breathe them in. Because I feel right. like there's, right, those of you listening and watching, right. my, man, those two words, if I could apply them to growing up, teenage years, 20s, decisions I made, if I had had proper training and then comfort to get me through the tough times, understanding how to access that. Because there's always going to be tough times, right? But I feel like we're all just really not going through them very well. Those two words would mean everything if we had those instilled in us properly. And those are two key words you can focus on in the subject of nurture. Now, you want to say, okay, well, how do I know and understand that maybe I have nurture issues? I think there's five main areas that we want to bring out that are evidence there needs to be healing in your life, in your heart, in the aspect of nurture. One of them is the inability to comfort yourself in hard times. When your back's against the wall and you're struggling, you can't seem to find the comfort that you need to maybe grieve or 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 process through some of the healing, some of the tears that may need to be cried or there's a difficulty in being encouraged in that in a way of, okay, I can do this. So you can be more prone to like self-pity or victim thinking or just numbing out. Right. So that's a big one. Right. Move on. It happened. Move on. What am I going to do? There's nothing I can do about it. Right. Which one would you bring out? I think... The one thing I've probably noticed for myself in my journey of understanding this is is mood. Mm. I have a very, I had a very hard time, and it's something that I think I'm still in process in a journey of healing, is mood. Not really a, yeah. being able to settle and have a peace about me. I was, whatever came my way, I blew with what, wherever the wind blew me. Right. And that's, and that's where a lot of, I think, people in the course of their day, they're feeling this like yes. swing up and down there's just not this stability and i'm not even talking about you know clinical mood disorders which is a you know like bipolar one and two and some of those categories where now there's a struggle where your highs are getting into dangerous kind of places and then addictions can come along with it and then there's deep drops and and there's these swings that take place that comes out of a lack of nurture whether it's a clinical kind of thing that you're struggling with or just every day where you wake up and you just, oh, and you go through the day and it's like, whew, you maybe get a little better, then boom, drop down again. And and the, the, the Holy Spirit's work is to remind us of truth and it's in a comforting, reassuring way that empowers us. How many of us are blocked from that because of a lack of nurture in your life? And I would... Um, pre- present to you some mother wounds. And the, like you said, yeah. the mother wounds are a little bit more difficult to identify because we don't necessarily go there and, and, and think about it in that way. And but I, I think that, uh, just to finish this thought, no, go ahead. I think that uh, no matter how great our parents were, God is the perfect father. So it doesn't matter how wounded or not wounded your upbringing was. Right. There is an upgrade that's needed to um, bring what what your life needs. So No, well, the thing I was going to say about even the recognition of understanding things that maybe your mom couldn't give you, we have a guilt. We have a big guilt when it comes to moms. Certain cultures have heavy guilt when it comes to their mothers. Right. And for a it's big true. reason, because we feel bad for moms because of so much that's on their shoulders. Right. Because the father for whatever reasons, went into his patterns of brokenness, which then affected the mother, yeah. which now she's not able to be in her lane because she's taking two roles on. She's trying to be dad in ways that he's not. Yep. And, and and then she's also trying to be mom. And then then here's the thing that's that's very critical for moms is that they end up neglecting themselves. Big time. So then you just kind of focus, well, let me just be there for the kids. And, and, and there's this whole flow that's just out of whack because... She's burnt out now, and and now she's stressed out, and and the kids are receiving the stress of that, when really, 
um, nurtures now being lost in the mix because then you're just trying to hurry them to to this group or that group or this thing or this program or this sports thing or school and church. And there isn't that cultivation of healthy rhythm in life. No. And I think that's important is everybody needs a healthy rhythm. Right. And and we we don't we lack that. We only know turn on and turn completely off. Right. Right? High gear. Right. We don't know how to have a rhythm. Like even at work, people don't know how to they just work, 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 yeah. exhausting the end of the day. They don't know how to work and then maybe just take a two second break and just Kind of think. And I used to be so jealous. Life. Yeah. I used to be so jealous of seeing people like that that could like casually walk in a room or see like a tough situation happening. And they had this cool, I have this picture in my mind of like people that, you know, were like loved really properly and received nurture and know how to comfort. They look so smooth. They can like glide into a room and glide. <laughs> And maybe it's my own imagination, but there is a piece. I guess at the end of the day, there is a piece that you can access right. that uh, very readily. That's right. That a lot of people I know for myself have a hard time That's right. doing. Yep. And that was a big, big item for me to recognize. I needed healing and nurture. Was yeah. during very difficult times, I didn't know what to grab onto. I'm in this yep. nebulous kind of like, uh, I don't know what to do, and. I had to learn, okay, God, I got to dig deep and learn how to nurture. In fact, we have developed a whole course that we're going to release and you can find out more information about that's going to talk about the subject of nurture and go into more detail, what it means, how to restore it, the factors that it can affect in your life. So you'll want to keep an eye out for that and search um, my training site for that that course. Mm. But... Going back to something that you said, the guilt issue, right? Where you yeah. said you feel guilt about it. Yeah. Here's another sign. This is the third one. Is there's a clear lack of nurture if you struggle with chronic guilt issues. If your primary mechanism in relating is driven by guilt. I feel bad, so I... Right, you know. or that's how a lot of people honestly love other people. They love them out of guilt. I feel so bad. I got to do this. I uh, I got to go spend time with them. I feel bad. That's right. really become our our mode of operation when it comes to even love and relationships. Right. And like you said, many generations have a lot of guilt in relationship yes. with mom. And so that guilt becomes a driving force of relationship. And guilt, if we allow it, is a heavy motivator. It'll motivate you. It'll oh, get yeah. you going. It'll, <laughs> it'll make you do all kinds of things. It'll wear you out. It will cause you to constantly lose your peace, that's a lack of nurture. Because when nurture's not there, here's the problem. Whenever there's difficulties relationally, you default to something's wrong with me. I need to be doing something more, or I should be giving more. I should be, and and, and this is a problem in the church. And it's, it's frustrating to see it because we're not recognizing this. So many people in the church, they're so prone to guilt. So when they hear messages, they're like, yeah, I'm not evangelizing enough. I'm not giving enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not serving enough. And it's guilt, 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 guilt. And it's non-productive. Right. Because God is not a guilt-ridden God who puts guilt on us to guilt us into action because um, guilt is manipulative. Right. And he's not going to manipulate you. He's not a puppet master. So I was very prone to guilt. Yeah. And that's something I had to shed off of my life because if I'm going to help people, especially in heart healing and difficult heart issues, I cannot be codependent. Right. I cannot be tied with people in these dysfunctional poles and people pleasing and all that. And guilt will be a driving force. Yeah. And if if your mother did not instill nurture in your life, I'll guarantee you'll be very prone to guilt factors in your life. Yeah. If I could, too, I want to bring out something that I think is an important issue. It's something that we have to deal with with most people. I think most, just even in the culture that we have right now, something that you and I both know this battle big time is very addictive behavior, obsessive thinking. Mm. Uh, We are seeing this in a, I'll use the word, pandemic Mm issue going on in the world right now is this issue of of addictive root in your life that's right so if you could i would love for you to speak to that and understanding that in relationship to nurture because i do think too when it comes to addiction we are in the culture which all these groups and support groups are so so amazing and ultimately we do have responsibility for our life 
But I think a lot of people, well, it's just me. There's so, I did it. I'm the problem. And we, we don't like looking at this aspect of it. People have a hard time going, oh, maybe I didn't receive that. We have a hard time. We, we, we like to easily blame ourselves. Right. We have, we're really good at that. But sometimes this can be a tricky thing to walk through when we're understanding addictions and understanding that you didn't get nurture in your life. Well, and it's not, you know, you mentioned blaming yourself. We never want to blame anything. Right. We don't want to blame anyone. Exactly. Never. Blaming is never, ever blaming parents, blaming God, blaming yourself. It's just not helpful. We want to recognize Recognize. areas that are important factors. Because when we get into the blame game, we put sole responsibility exactly. on somebody. Exactly. And right. then we don't take responsibility. What we want to recognize is there's all of these multiple factors that influence. I think addictions, one of the words of, of nurture is um, teaching in how to curb your passions, in how to, have, mm. um, how to have control over your affections and what you give yourself over to. The Bible, when it was written, especially the New Testament, there was a lot of addressing of addictive behaviors, the mm-hmm. Corinthian church. There was a lot of sexual addictions and a lot of just kind of craziness. James talked about the church going after their lust. You have not, you ask not. And when you ask, you go into your lust. Lust is um, the biblical word for addictions. And it's um, it, it, we have you know teachings on that, and I have more materials I'm going to write on that. But really, nurture teaches you how to curb your passions. So I've, I've personally been doing a study lately on, on some terms, and one of them has been the word self-control, and how self-control really speaks of mastery over yourself, that the, the emotions that rise up in you, there's a mastery of controlling how they manipulate your life, or how they affect your life, or how they influence your thoughts, behaviors, and actions. And if we lack nurture, we don't know how to curb passions. The, the first place that you learn nurture is literally on your mother's breast. Mm-hmm. When you are born and you come out of the womb, what is that? The mouth and, and the sucking. So right. where does lack of nurture start with addictions? My eating issues? Eating, smoking. Drink. Smoking. Drinking, drinking, it's all here. Sexual, right. you, you, you know, be from even even uh, sexual issues, right. you kissing, right. you know, those kind of things. It's all here with the mouth. Right. So, restoring that, healing that, starts with God begin to heal those areas where I did not receive nurture. Right. Because I mean, maybe even some people when they were born. They did not land on their mother's breast and on her chest. They had to go into an incubator, right. or, or you, you know, some of those things are, are good to pray through. But God, would you would you heal and restore those areas? Right. It, it's it's not, nothing is outside of God's realm of being able to reach. But if you're mindful of it, you yeah. give God invitation to it. So, for example, I had eating issues of overeating and I gained a lot of weight and it took me years and years to, to, to get a hold of that addiction in my life. And part of it was inviting God into those times of eating. God, I invite yeah. you to come and, and nurture me so that I don't try to fight the devil with a fork. Right. That I I fight these areas with nurture. Yeah. And so that's that's important. So it goes into every addictive area exactly. that we fall into is a lack of nurture because addictions are a response to pain. How can I fill this and feel better and right? And so that's what nurture was originally designed to do. Bingo. Totally. There's also the aspect of nurture that we'll we'll get into one more, but I want to talk about another facet of nurture is nurture brings healthy correction in a loving way. So So nobody knows how to receive correction. And we either spiral in it or the people giving it don't know how to nurture uh, instruction in healthy ways. Absolutely. We feel less than and we kind of just avoid any correction at all. That's really something great to bring out as, as you're pondering this topic in your own life. Do you have a problem with authority issues? You know, see this in, in, yeah. in, in a lot in certain cultures and people where there's fatherlessness and homes where there's fatherlessness. Where If you did not receive that loving presence of discipline and correction in love, you're going to have a major problem with authority as you get older. That's right. And it goes back to those wounds. We have to start raising the standard and opening our eyes and going, okay, it's not everybody else. Mm. I have to take the target off of everybody else 
and look within and say, what do I need to receive from God? What do I need to be healed in so that I can start having better relationships with others? That's really good, really good. I think a uh, fifth one that I bring up as far mm-hmm. as lack, struggle comforting ourselves, especially in hard yeah. times, mood issues of any kind, guilt prone addictions. A fifth one I'd add, and there's more that we could put, but a yeah. fifth one I would add is anger battles. If someone has severe anger, I have found mm-hmm. that 99% of the time, there's mother wounds there. Yeah, It's a very interesting factor that I see over and over again, that there's mother wounds, yes, or father issues, and yes, the, the son can be replicating his father's anger. Yeah. Yes, the father has a major influence, but when you have proper nurture, anger doesn't have as much of a room because you curb your, your, your you know, erratic... Yeah, you thoughts. know how to fill those moods. You know how to fill them. You know how to access them. You know how to calm that, yourself down. Exactly. I'm stressed out. You know how to regulate. Yeah. Nurture regulates. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I think that what we want to do is we want to encourage you and invite you into processing this out. And there's yeah. there's a couple directions I'm going to give you. The first one is I have a, a series that I put together called Healing the Heart. It's It's available for free online through my training site. Just go there and sign up for it. In that... There is a section where there's a prayer in praying through healing to aspects of mother wounds and and the aspects of nurture in your life. And you'll want to go through that and and position your heart. I talk about thoughts. I talk about healing to the heart. And then we talk about aspects of healing the heart process. We want to include in that discussion, obviously, the emphasis of experiencing God's love as your father which is always going to be an important aspect in this journey. This gives you a foundational walkthrough and a practical application of what what that can look like. But I'm also going to be making available, uh, once we launch this episode, I think the next day, uh, we'll make an announcement of it. We're going to post a series that you can access on Nurture on what it's like when you have lack of nurture, how to practically apply it into your life and begin to engage a life that's more filled with nurture. A lot of spiritual insights, but very practical stuff. Because you have to realize that sometimes we engage spiritual topics with a heavenly mindedness. We don't realize the day-to-day aspects of nurture. And sometimes applying the nurture of God is learning to cultivate gratitude, learn to speak encouragement to yourself, Learn to take breaks in the day. Mm. Learn to comfort others and, uh, you know, taking care of yourself, uh, exercising, and those kind of simple things that we don't we don't. Right, because honestly, a good gauge to understand too, it, it, you know, if you identified with any of those points, which I think most people can, um, yes. But just try to sit alone for ten seconds. That's amazing. Can, can you do that? Can you sit and just take a breath, calm the mind, and can you sit by yourself? Most people can't do it. And that's a lack of nurture. Big time. That's right. And and we wonder why we're not connecting to the thoughts of God, which with the Holy Spirit's job, again, is to bring that. But what's he bringing? He's bringing what the master taught, Jesus taught, right? Jesus said, he'll take what I have said and make it remind you of it. Right. So we don't have the word hidden in us the way we need to. Yeah. The Holy Spirit, or in that moment, we're so, you know, all over the place that we can't access that truth because the Holy Spirit keeps bringing that. He's pulling from that inside of us and and reminding us of it and then comforting and say, it's going to be okay. Then the Father, His presence, oh my goodness, it overshadows all the darkness and just goes, Dad's here, you're okay, you can get through this. Right. And really at the end of the day, most of us don't, you know, we hear nowadays it's been brought out, they can look in the brain and see what's developed and not developed and if that was not developed in your brain systems from the time you were a child, it's not there. Right. So we have some work to do. If you are noticing, I don't even know what it's like to have peace in my life, then it's time to take a step back, take a breath. All right, God, help me to understand what nurture looks like. That's right. Help me to reestablish what this looks like so that I can better access you, mm. feel your love, and ultimately hear from him. Could you do a favor and could you pray a prayer from your own heart as a sister in Christ, as a mother, Mm. as somebody who helps a lot of people? Mm. Can you pray a prayer for people listening of restoring nurture in their hearts? Sure. 
So thank you so much, Father God, for those who are tuning in and wanting more healing, wanting better relationships, the restoring of their hearts and relationships in this time and in this season. It's, it's a desperate cry from, from your people, from your kids. And so I ask today, Lord, that you would show each and every person who is recognizing, wow, I realize that I, I can't access peace. I realize where I'm getting angry. I, I realize where I have addictions manifesting in my life, whether it be I can't, I can't stay away from my phone or I'm finding something to constantly fill time and I can't just be quiet and silent inside of myself. Yeah. Um, I have an addiction to food. I, I have all these things going on that I feel, what is wrong with me? Today, they're recognizing, wow, I'm recognizing I, I need nurture in my life. I need to understand this element of nurture. So for those of, of you that are saying, Show me nurture today. Show me what it feels like to be nurtured. Father, I would ask that you would reveal that to them. That you would help them to be released in obsessive thinking, their moods and anger, and that, that you would show them what your pure mm. nurture and love feels like. Feels like in the very fiber of their beings. That they would be reminded of that as they move into the, even the next minute or hour, they, for, they forget it. They go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I need to understand what your nurture and your comfort is. I need to be able to access that more. So I just release that over the hearts of those of you that are recognizing this today. It's a crucial element of our healing. It's a crucial element of how we relate to those around us to ultimately be um, better husbands, better spouses, better parents, better brothers and sisters in Christ, is understanding this element of nurture. So I release that over your hearts today, that you'll be able to capture it, even but for a moment, and then build on that, build on that, and take greater levels of peace and nurture and uh, God's love in your life today. So I thank you for that, Dad. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm. Take uh, advantage of the resources that we've made available, and we pray that this will leave some seeds in your heart that you'll begin pursuing. This is a journey. Mm. And uh, you want to make this a part of your grid for experiencing transformation and having a heart that's living fully alive. God bless you. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you, everyone.